Well, good morning. And welcome to a very autumnal morning here in Cambridge. Now today we're going to be talking about all things fence mounted solar panels. So I'm going to give you an update. I'm going to show you exactly what they generated across the summer. We're going to look at uh, what the ROI is on these panels. But before we do that, I wanted to give you an update on a couple of enhancements that I'm going to be planning to make to them over the winter. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So as you can see here, in my haste to get the system up and running, I improvised a quick cable run that allows the cables to run along the fence there with some 3D printed clips to hold the cables in place. And as you can see, there is an upper and a lower cable that takes the two panels that are going into the Stream Ultra down to the side of the office there. But it doesn't really look tidy. It was never how I wanted it to look. So we're gonna be doing some upgrades here. I'm gonna be running some, um, some piping, some conduit along the fence uh, to try and blend it in a little bit better. I'm gonna condense both cables into the same conduit. And we've gotta fix this issue. So the cables you can see here run across this concrete post. And even though they've only been on there for a few months, I can feel a little roughness on the back of the cables. Now, the reason for this is when the wind blows, those imperceptible movements where the wind is just moving the cable a little bit is causing some rubbing on the back of the cables on the concrete posts. So my plan is to string the whole thing inside conduit, let the conduit be the sacrificial material so that uh, if the wind does move it, it rubs away a little bit of plastic conduit, which is easily replaced, and we don't end up with a potential short situation from the DC cables. So the other thing that I need to resolve are my wind protection devices. Now, I haven't talked about these before, but let me show you what I made. Let me explain how they work and how we might need to make some improvements to them. So down here on the bottom of the, ca on the, bottom of the panel, you can just see this little plastic blob. So if I actually take this off, what you'll see is it is just a piece of plastic. Um, it has obviously been designed so that, if I can get the dog hair off, um, designed so that it clips onto the bottom of the panel and it just pushes the panel away from the fence. Nice and simply. This gives us a few extra degrees on the panel in the summer to capture the maximum sunlight. The idea behind these was that if the wind would come in along behind the panels when they're away from the fence, as soon as it lifted the panel, these would fall off and the panel would return to flat against the fence. Now, these work quite well. The only problem is the minute these drop off, this happens. There's nothing they love to do more than chew up my pieces of plastic that I made on the 3D printer. Can I have that? Thank you. Thank you, good boy. So I think we need a solution to that. That means the dogs don't end up with more chew toys, but those are projects for another day. Today, it's all about the data. Now, for those that are new to the channel, let me explain the setup. It's pretty simple. We have six 440 watt panels on our fences, but they're actually split across two completely different systems. One is based upon the EcoFlow PowerStream system. Now that's been installed and running now for a few years. Now the PowerStream system is a bit more of a DIY system. Um, in fact, I have one here. This is the small micro inverter. This is just an inverter. Um, if you want to have battery storage, you have to use uh, power stations, specifically from EcoFlow, as it's a proprietary setup to connect your batteries to this. But that system has been running faultlessly now for a few years um, and we have a full year's worth of data that I can share with you from that system. Now the Stream Ultra that we installed just about three months ago and I, if you haven't seen those videos I'll put a link um, up in the up in wherever it comes somewhere at the top of the screen. Um, there's also, also be a link in the description. Um, the Stream Ultra is a much more modern system and is designed to be more like an appliance that runs in your house. So it is literally plug and play. So we only have about three months worth of data on that, but when we combine the data with our other solar uh, data, we can project out what we think these systems are gonna generate over the next 12 months. 
Now, the way these systems run is uh, I use them to offset my base load in my house. So we have our big solar system, and that's designed there for, for large spikes of energy. So if somebody turns on the oven or, or the induction hob, then that will supply power. But the power stream and the stream ultra, they provide base load. That means that they consistently output 400 watts. And if they can't get that 400 watts directly from solar, which they can't do in the winter, then they will take it from their batteries. So during the winter, those systems, we will grid charge those batteries using off-peak cheap, cheap electricity. Okay, so let's take a look at the two systems. And we'll, let's just go back uh, a year for a moment. So in 2024, the PowerStream system, that's the, the DIY system, um, produced about 190 kilowatts. Now that was only a partial year because we made some changes, we added some new hardware. So we have about a half a year's worth of data there. But that'll help us with our projections as we go forward. So in 2025, Year to date, so uh, I'm recording this at the beginning of October, so I'll give you January to September, that system generated 350.88 kilowatt hours. And if we look at the projections for the remainder of the year, which to be honest, aren't that great, um, we, we expect to see something around the 380 kilowatt hour mark um, for the whole year. Now, as I say, that system um, has been in a while. It just consists of two panels, so two 440-watt panels connected to the microinverter and uh, with some battery storage attached to that. We self-consume more than 95% of the energy that that system generates. That system, the solar panels collect the sun, they put it into the batteries, and then that supplies the house with its 400 watts of base load. So we don't export hardly anything at all from that system. So back in July, we installed the Stream Ultra system. Um, that has four 440 watt panels attached to it, but they're configured in such a way that two of the panels are set up for morning sunshine and two of the panels are set up for evening sunshine. So you would expect it will generate more energy than the system that just has the two panels which are set up for morning sunshine. So when we take the Stream Ultra and we combine what it generated with our power stream system, we can see in July we generated just over 65 kilowatt hours. Now we only had a few days with the Stream Ultra in July, but as we got into August, the system really started to, to run. We had 139 kilowatt hours, and then in September, 98.76 kilowatt hours. So we think over the course of the summer, with uh, electricity rates at around 26 to 27 pence per kilowatt hour, that they've saved us about 81 pounds in energy bills. And then when we look at the two systems here, you can see the difference that Stream Ultra is making. So the yellow part of the bar along the bottom there, that is the power stream system. And as you can see, from July to August to September, there is a decline. Obviously, as the seasons start to change, we're going to see less and less energy from that system. But uh, ignoring July for a minute, the, the Stream Ultra system there we only had for a few days. Look at the difference it made in August. And that's because we've got twice as many panels attached to it, and they're configured for both morning and evening sun. And certainly during July and August, that evening sun meant that they were still generating at 7.30 at night. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pop up a uh, an app on the screen. This is an app that I've used and I've shown on the channel many times before. It's called Sun on Track. Sun on Track uh, lets you see where exactly the sun will be using a kind of AR view. So as you can see here, I'm stood in my garden, and as I pan around, you can see where the sun is tracking today and where it'll be tracking on midwinter's day. And what you'll notice is that the morning sun, the gap between where it clears the horizon and goes through the trees, um, is not very big. So we're not going to get an, a lot of morning sun as we go through the winter. And as when I track around, you'll see on the other side of the garden, we're not going to get a great deal of evening sun either. As the sun starts to sink lower and lower in the sky, we're going to get less and less generation from this system. So if we project out annually, we think the power stream is going to uh, generate somewhere in the region of 380 kilowatt hours. So it will make us about 102 pounds based on current energy rates. The Stream Ultra, anywhere between 750 and 800 kilowatt hours per year. So again, another 210 pounds there. So when we combine the two together, the fence mounted system should generate somewhere in the region of 1.1 to 1.2 megawatt hours that should give us a, a saving of about £309. So again, just to put that into graph form for you, um, 
here you can see we're starting in October. This is what we're projecting for the next 12 months. So you'll see once we get through October into November, December and January, the system produces almost nothing, um, a, a few kilowatt hours in a, in a whole month. But again, once the clocks change as we get into February and into March, this is where the fence mounted system really starts to shine. Now, one of the questions I get asked a lot is, why don't you tip your panels up? Now you can see, uh, for those of you who watched the earlier bit of the video with the dog, we do have these, these little stands that push the panels a few degrees off the fence. But because of wind considerations, I don't want the wind to be able to get behind those, uh, those panels, is that's the reason we keep them in an almost vertical configuration throughout most of the year. But they still generate a significant amount of extra power come the summer months. So again, this is just our actuals versus projected generation. So you can see there that's July, August and September in the green and then what I'm projecting for the rest of the year. So as I say, our fence mounted system is going to generate somewhere in the region of 1.1 of to 1.2 megawatt hours this year. So that means it's going to save us about 300 pounds annually. So is the system ever going to pay for itself? Well, yes, it will, but it's not going to do it in one year or two years, it's gonna take somewhere between three to five years possibly to pay for itself. And that assumes that we don't do any upgrades, we just let it run as is for the next maybe five years. But the real beauty of this system is, it, it is a DIY friendly solution. Um, if you are renting a property and you can't put solar panels on your roof or your landlord won't let you plug things into uh, into your consumer unit. You can literally hang these panels on a balcony, on a fence, put them in your garden, run the cables into a system like the Stream Ultra, and then you can draw power directly from the top of that device. You don't have to integrate it with your home power grid. And then if you do move house, you can literally pick the whole system up and you can take it with you. So hopefully this was interesting. Uh, I hope I've been able to show with these fence mounted systems that you don't need to have solar on your rooftop to get the benefits from it. Yes, the returns on investment are gonna be a lot smaller, especially when you have panels mounted in a vertical orientation like mine, but they're still gonna pay for themselves over a period of years. And the beauty of this system is you can just pick it all up and take it to a new property if you decide to move. Anyway, if you have any questions, do hit me up in the comments. Um, I always like chatting with everybody. So uh, yeah, let me know in the comments if there are any questions on anything that I've shown you today. Um, I'll be back soon with more videos on the system over the winter. As I say, I will be doing those upgrades to get the cables all into conduit, and tidy everything up, make it look a little bit neater. With that, it just remains for me to say thank you for clicking on the video. I hope you found this interesting. And if you have, and I'm lucky, I will see you back here real soon for another one. Take care. Bye-bye.